What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our SEC football channel. And in this video, we're going to give you our top 10 quarterbacks for the SEC in 2019. If you've been a subscriber to the channel, you know we did our pre-spring quarterback rankings. We ranked every team's quarterback situation. Uh, and already I've made some changes from that list. And because we did the top 10 running backs, I wanted to give you a top 10 quarterback video so we're not ranking all the teams we're just giving you the top 10 and i tell you what this was a tough video to make these are tough rankings to do because i feel like every team in the sec all 14 teams are gonna have good quarterback play in 2019 i really do uh there are some very very good guys at the top and even if you go down to the very bottom i think you're gonna see some very productive quarterbacks there these rankings are based off of talent and also production uh, so which guys are going to have the opportunity to to get more yards and get more touchdowns and things like that. That does play into this. It all really just ties together. And we've actually got a tie at number 10. I don't like doing a tie for a video like this, but I just I couldn't make any separation here. We've got Ben Hicks, first of all, at number 10. Uh, you see what he did last year, but you can really ignore those stats because you really want to go back to 2017 and see what he did when Chad Morris was at SMU, and he had a great season there. He's already off to a great start in the spring at Arkansas. Uh, he, he's got a good grasp of the offense. It seems to have good leadership. Uh, players are responding well to him. They've added some weapons, some young guys uh, to the roster. So I think Ben Hicks is going to have a really good year for Arkansas. Um, and so I've got him at number 10, and we've actually got two graduate transfers tied at number 10. The other one is Riley Neal of Vanderbilt. Uh, you see his numbers from last year. They weren't great last year, but... Uh, this is a guy that started ever since he was a true freshman at Ball State. Uh, he has some experience playing against some of the Power 5 conferences while he was at Ball State. And uh, I watched the Vanderbilt spring game, and he just really looked like he was in command of the offense, really looked like he was uh, potentially going to be a star in the SEC this year. I mean, I, I really saw it. I saw the arm strength. I saw the decision-making and was really impressed with him. No guarantee that he's going to win the starting job, but I feel like he's going to. And to me, you got Ben Hicks, you got Riley Neal, very similar players, both graduate transfers. I couldn't make any separation, so I put them at uh, number 10, and we tied them there. At number 9, we go to Terry Wilson of Kentucky. Uh, the passing numbers probably won't be great for him. Uh, he's more dangerous as a runner. You look at what he did last year. Threw for almost 2,000 yards, but he had... Over 500 yards rushing. I think he's going to have to do even more of that this year with Benny Snell gone. Uh, the weapons around him are not great. You do have Lynn Bowden at wide receiver. He's going to be the go-to guy. But I do think because he's not going to throw it as much and because there aren't as many weapons around him, uh, you're not going to see Terry Wilson in the top five or six of this list. I think we dropped him one spot maybe from where we had this, where he had him in the uh, pre-spring quarterback rankings. But still, I have him in here at number nine. At number eight, we have Jarrett Guarantano of Tennessee. And you look at the weapons that he has around him, uh, there's a lot of reason to be optimistic if you're a Tennessee fan. I'm expecting him to have a much better year this year. He was efficient last year. 12 touchdowns, just three interceptions, a 62% completion percentage. Those are very solid numbers. But threw for less than 2,000 yards. Just didn't get the opportunity. I didn't think the play calling was as aggressive as it could have been. And I think they have to to get a little bit more aggressive this year. They're going to have to throw the ball more. Uh, they, again, have very, very talented wide receivers. Uh, their receiving group is, is right there among the best in the SEC. So I'm expecting Guarantano to have a big year uh, and, and be a little bit better in 2019. And number seven, we got Joe Burrow. And these next few were so close. I mean, it was very hard to make any separation Joe Burrow comes in here at number seven. I love this kid's attitude. I love his toughness, his running ability. Uh, his passing needs to improve a little bit, his completion percentage. Uh, but he's a guy that, that I would love to have as my quarterback. Uh, again, there are a lot of really good quarterbacks in the SEC, and you've got to separate them somehow. LSU is a team that likes to run the football a lot, so I don't see him really throwing it a ton. So maybe he doesn't have the opportunity to, to put up huge numbers. Uh, but still, Joe Burrow, a very good quarterback. We've got him at number seven. And again, these next few are very, very close. At number six, we go to Felipe Franks of Florida. I'm expecting him to have a big year in 2019. I really liked what they did last year. Dan Mullen started to utilize Franks' legs a little bit. 
Uh, didn't really run the ball much the year before, but he had 350 yards rushing last year, 24 touchdowns, six interceptions, pretty good ratio there, threw for almost 2,500 yards. Another guy that I don't think is going to necessarily have the huge numbers because they're going to be able to run the football very similar to, to what you see out of LSU. Uh, I think Felipe Franks is a little bit more talented as a passer compared to Joe Burrow. That's really probably where the separation is between those two, but it's very, very tight. Uh, and even at our next guy, number five, I think is right there bunched up with those guys. And that is Jake Bentley of South Carolina. Last year, he did throw for over 3,000 yards, 27 touchdowns. Got to clean up the interceptions, though. He had 14 interceptions. Needs to do a better job there. 62% completion, completion percentage is pretty solid. Debo Samuel is gone, yes, but uh, they're already talking about how Shai Smith is fitting into that role. They have Brian Edwards back at wide receiver. So they have talent around Jake Bentley. They've got some talented running backs to kind of take the pressure off the, the passing game. Uh, so I think Jake Bentley, once again, will be a 3,000-yard passer. I think if he can, can clean up the, the interceptions, be a little bit more efficient, he has a chance to be uh, maybe in the top three of the SEC quarterbacks. But for now, we are going to keep him at number five. At number four, we've got Kellen Mond of Texas A&M. You see, he also threw for over 3,000 yards last year, 24 touchdowns. Just nine interceptions, 472 yards rushing. Uh, so the separation between him and Bentley, the fact that he didn't turn the ball over as much, the fact that he is a better runner, you put all that together. Plus, uh, I really have a lot of confidence in Jimbo Fisher coaching up Kellamon. Plus, the weapons are back at wide receiver. Travion Williams is gone at running back. So they're probably going to throw it a lot more. Uh, just all of these coming together, and then it kind of makes it seem like Kellen Mond is the obvious choice at number four. Uh, we had him a little bit lower in our pre-spring pre -spring quarterback rankings, but I think uh, you've got to put him at number four here for the Aggies. At number three, we go to Missouri and Kelly Bryant. Uh, I think it's, it's mostly going to be his legs that help elevate him uh, to this status, to be the third best quarterback in the SEC. I don't think he's the third best passer. Uh, I think he would be much lower on the list if we were just looking at passing ability. But I think he's the best runner. He's the best running quarterback in the SEC. You go back to 2017 when he was the full-time starter. Threw for almost 3,000 yards, 13 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, 665 rushing yards. Uh, they've got a lot of weapons around him at Missouri. I think he's going to have a big year. I think that he's you're going to see an improved passer. I think he will be good in that area. Uh, but I think he's going to be still... Uh, a run first quarterback and he is a dangerous runner that's why we've got him at number three jake Fromm at number two threw for over 2700 yards last season 30 touchdowns just six interceptions a 67 percent completion percentage he was efficient he was solid and i think he's more than a game manager myself i've heard him uh being called just a game manager but he can make all the throws he's not necessarily a, a playmaker a guy that's gonna scramble and make a bunch of plays with his legs or anything like that. He is a pocket passer, yes, uh, but he is a pocket passer that can make all the throws. I think he's an NFL talent. I think he's going to have a big year here for Georgia. I think he's going to go to the NFL after this year, uh, and I think you'll see him throw for over 3,000 yards, and you see Georgia a little bit more balanced maybe in 2019. But at number one, it's Tua Tunga by It's not even close. Threw for almost 4,000 yards last season. No one else is close to that. 43 touchdowns, no one's close to that. Just six interceptions, and I think four of those were in the SEC Championship and the National Championship, and that may not be right. But a 69% completion percentage, his numbers were off the charts until really the SEC Championship. Up until that point, he was, was just, it was like he wasn't even human last year. We saw that he was human in that game and again in the National Championship, but he still is the best quarterback in the SEC. And he's one of the top two quarterbacks in the country uh, when you look at Tua and Trevor Lawrence. In my opinion, still, those two guys are one and two, whichever order you want to put them in. So those are our top ten quarterbacks for the SEC. Again, the teams that did not get mentioned here, uh, you got Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Auburn. All three of those teams have very good quarterbacks. Uh, Auburn has a few that, that could potentially be on this list at the end of the year. But as of right now, uh, I'm just not – not quite ready to put those guys ahead of some of the guys that we put in this video. The, the quarterbacks in the SEC are just very good this year. It is the deepest I think we've seen the quarterback position in the SEC in a long time. And I think it's going to make for some very exciting football this fall. Thank you for watching this video. If you're an SEC football fan, please subscribe to the channel. 
Leave us your thoughts down in the comments below. And for the latest in SEC football, keep it right here.